Hi there and welcome to another Car Cleaning Guru video. Here I attended to the luxurious interior of this 1991 Brooklyn's Green Bentley Turbo R which had recently been brought over to the UK from Canada. Having also spent much of its life in both Spain and Canada, it was clear this was going to be an interesting one with the full spectrum of detailing debacles likely to be encountered, exaggerated by the fact I had to try and capture it all on film for you friendly folks watching at home. Despite on the surface the interior not appearing too dirty, on closer inspection my keen detailer's eye told me it probably hadn't had a thorough going over for a number of years. And while the camera didn't quite capture the full extent of the soiling, I can assure you that the sea of leather was deeply ingrained with decades of dirt accompanied by the usual scuffs, marks and visible muck associated with a light coloured interior like this, and so I knew I was in for the long haul with this old girl. There are also areas of excessive wear and tear which generally come part and parcel with a vehicle of this age and which cleaning alone could never fix, however I was confident that with the right products and a decent investment of time a realistic improvement could be made to the cabin, bringing it back to at least somewhere close to its classy form of glory. First on the agenda was a thorough vacuum, with the spacious boot being attended to up front. In an ideal world I would have also lightly shampooed the carpets here to brighten them up as well as lift out the musky odour, yet knowing how long the leather was going to take me and not wanting to get caught short later in the day with the advancing twilight, I opted out of wetting the upholstery, instead thoroughly backing it with a narrow crevice tool which provides the most precise extraction of loose dirt. The thick signature Bentley overmats were then removed and the front seats positioned accordingly before the interior was given a detailed vacuum to remove as much loose dirt as possible prior to cleaning. The matching green carpets were covered with the crevice tool first which admittedly weren't too heavily contaminated. before all areas of the leather trim were worked over using a circular soft brush attachment. When vacuuming leather seats it's important to gently pry the various areas apart to draw out accumulated dirt from the creases and joins. with the crevice tool being gently employed to access the tight spots between the top and bottom sections. Both the dash and centre console with their numerous switches, vents, gauges and bezels were then gently vacuumed off. And in a vehicle of this age it's worth checking that the switches in particular are all solid prior to doing this to prevent loose or broken ones being accidentally sucked up. The deluxe door cards were vacuumed last and both the soft brush attachment and crevice tool were employed to remove dust and dirt from the leather, chrome and upholstered surfaces.
I spent around two and a half hours in total vacuuming, with roughly half an hour being spent on each quarter of the interior and half an hour on the boot. And while this may seem a little excessive to some, the more loose dirt and debris you can remove here, the less you'll have to deal with during the actual cleaning process. Moving on to the leather, which made up the vast majority of the Turbo R's interior, I grabbed Zimol's pH neutral glycerin enriched cleaner and a soft bristled leather cleaning brush, as well as a microfiber towel to mop up the mess. Beginning with the seats, I liberally applied the leather cleaner to a section and worked it over with my bare hands to ensure an even spread of the product and prevent any unsightly drip stains from occurring. before thoroughly scrubbing it into the grain with the brush using a combination of linear and circular motions. I'm wiping over the area with the microfiber towel to remove the freshly released dirt and excess product residue. While this may look and sound somewhat aggressive, the brush is actually very soft and apart from steam cleaning, this is the only real way neglected leather can be deeply cleansed. For stubborn marks that couldn't be shifted with the brush, I used a magic eraser in conjunction with the Zimol cleaner, gently working it over the surface of the leather until they were either fully removed or noticeably reduced. Although the brushing was making a marginal improvement, the areas worked over with the micro-abrasive eraser appeared far brighter and cleaner, likely due to a small amount of surface dye being removed, but with the decades of dirt clearly having become one with the leather, and with so many stubborn marks tainting the interior, I decided that in order to produce a decent turnaround the magic eraser was going to have to be employed on a larger scale, something I wouldn't normally do, but desperate times sometimes call for desperate measures. The leather cleaning brush and magic eraser combination were then used to remove as much ingrained dirt, discoloration and stubborn scuff marks as possible from all areas of the cream interior, including the seat backs and sides, the grubby door cards and the areas around the dash and centre console.
Roughly three hours were spent cleaning and effectively colouring in the leather, which admittedly did start to take its toll on me, but as with any vehicle in this neglected state, regardless of its quality, sometimes there's no easy fix and it simply takes as long as it takes. Once I performed as much deep leather cleaning as I felt was realistically possible, I then set about spending another hour or so thoroughly protecting the freshly scrubbed surface with the synthetic 303 aerospace protectant to seal in the finish and provide a protective barrier to any future soiling and UV exposure. This was even more important to do here considering I'd worked pretty much the entirety of the leather interior with the micro abrasive sponge and likely removed what little original lacquer there was sitting on top of the dye. It was simply sprayed directly onto the surface before being gently wiped over and buffed off to a non glossy factory finish with a fresh microfiber towel. I wasn't too concerned about overspray either, as the chrome details, walnut trim and glass still had to be cleaned, plus this product can be safely applied to a wide variety of materials. With the leather finally complete I moved on to dressing the centre console, dash and various switches with the same product, working it in and over with both a clean soft bristle detailing brush and another fresh microfiber towel until the desired finish was achieved. The last of the cleaning tasks was the chrome, wood grain and glass. With the light beginning to fade I decided to just hit all three with an ammonia free glass cleaning product to save time and because in my experience it's also one of the best ways to quickly achieve a smear and fingerprint free finish on these types of materials. In a full detail situation of course the chrome and walnut would be polished to remove light swirls and impart a deep luster but here I simply didn't have the time for that level of labour so a basic wipe down of these areas had to suffice.
When cleaning the windows, I lowered them a little to ensure the tops weren't overlooked, although because the exterior remained dirty, I didn't expect to get them 100% smear free as it makes it much harder to fully check your work. Likely driving the neighbours insane, I fired up George one last time and gave all areas a quick blast to remove any remaining dirt and dust particles that may have accumulated during the cleaning process. I should also point out here that the thick Bentley overmats I was hoping to firm myself clean unfortunately had to be overlooked here as there just wasn't enough time left to properly attend to them. Instead it was recommended they were placed into a pillowcase and given a gentle machine wash to provide the deep clean they deserve. And at nine hours deep, it was time to pack up and grab some afters of the now neat and tidy Turbo R's interior. With the time it takes me to film as well as clean, this large interior job was always going to be more of a compromise than an in-depth detail. However, with the vast majority of soiling removed and most of the surfaces attended to in some shape or form, the Bentley's luxurious cream leather, chrome and walnut wood grain interior now looked a little more respectable and ready for use on the UK's roads than it appeared earlier in the day. As always, thanks for watching. If you haven't already, subscribe to catch more car cleaning videos like this, and I'll see you all again shortly.